time series graph is really great when you're trying to show how a variable changes across time or across different stages of a test or something like that. So what I have here is um, four different participants, their heart rate data, um, so how the heart rate changed from rest to stage one, two, three, and four of a Bruce Protocol treadmill test, which is a very commonly used test in cardiac centers around the country as well in, as in exercise science programs. Um, <clears throat> so if you set up a, a little grid, kind of like what I have here, where you have your participants and your stages and then all of the data, this is how Excel wants it if you're going to show each participant as its own line. Um, so if you go up to insert, um, so highlight that data, go up to insert, and go to this, um, this chart type that looks like a, a line graph and click. Um, so I click the one that has the dots. You could have clicked the ones that were just lines. It would give you a similar graph. And so this is the basic graph. Um, to put in a title, I have something typed here that I think makes sense for this. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste it in. And uh, so I'll just stretch this out so the title fits all in one line. Um, so cardiac response to a Bruce Protocol treadmill. So that's something that, uh, that tells you what this graph is without um, being the exact same information that's going to be on the X and Y axis. So on the X axis, we already have that in because we had it, um, the, it was pulled in by Excel from the data in our grid. So the resting condition, stage one through stage four um, stages of the test. Uh, but we do need to add a Y axis label. So if you just click on the, um, the graph, go up to the chart tools to design, click on add chart elements, go to axis titles and primary vertical axis, and that's going to add a um, title there. So we need to tell our readers or whoever's looking at this that it is heart rate, so heart rates, and we need to tell units, usually you put units in parentheses, so open parentheses, and it's beats per minute, so BPM is the abbreviation, and then close parentheses. And uh, let me get rid of the capitalization. Oftentimes, um, beats per minute is lowercase, so we'll do that. Um, either way, you, you'd probably be fine. Um, so heart rate in beats per minute. And um, this is our basic graph if we're trying to show each participant as its own data. Um, so oftentimes that's not what you want to do though, so let me move this to the side. Um, again, this is all four participants, each one has its own line, but usually what you're going to do, um, at least if you're doing it for, to demonstrate uh, the purpose of saying that heart rate goes up with exercise, which is what this graph is showing. Um, so if you're trying to show um, all the participants together what the response is, what you want to do is graph the, um, the average of the results rather than each participant separately. Um, and so I made this um, table of information here based on our original table. Now we have the average value uh, in this row instead of an individual participant's value. And so we'll just do the same thing. We're going to go to insert. We're going to go to the, um, the chart a button that looks like a line graph, click that, and again we could do a line without the dots, but I, I kind of like the dots, so I'm going to do the line with the dots. And then this is the same graph as this, except for this one has each line representing a person, and this is average data. Um, and because I had this title pre-typed in there, it put it up here on the top, and let me just stretch this out so it's all in one line. All right, so we do need to, again, enter the y-axis information. So go back up to add chart elements, uh, axis title, primary vertical, and again, heart, heart rates, and then in parentheses, beats per minute, and parentheses. All right, and so here is the same data I'll put them side by side here. This is individual data um, in a time series graph. This is average data in a time series graph. And either one of these would be perfectly acceptable uh, in most academic settings like a classroom or a teaching lab. Um, you do want to do some additional prettying of these graphs if you're going to use this for a research publication or a research presentation. Um, 
but this is the basic grass here. I'll make another video to show how to take these basic grass and to turn them into a research worthy um, graph. All right, hope that helped and thanks. Come back for the next video and you'll see that other information.